Welcome, one and all, to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. Today is a... You can feel it. You can, you can feel it. I'm, glad, I'm glad you guys have got the energy, because you can feel it on the street today. Today's a very rough day. Mm -hmm. So let's start off with something from the smile file. Thanks to Trump's trade war with China, the Dow Jones Industrial Average lost more than 750 points today. <laughs> and that was a smile file. Because <laughs> it's, uh, it's really all downhill from here. Um, you know, I've been watching uh, this show on HBO, uh, Chernobyl. Mm -hmm. You guys seen that? You guys seen Chernobyl? Chernobyl. Yeah, don't tell me how it ends. And... <laughs> In the thing about the, the nuclear uh, reactor and blowing up and everything like that, uh, over and over again in it, um, a, a scientist or an engineer will tell a politician, hey, we got a real problem here. The nuclear core is going to melt down and kill everyone. Because mm. if the politicians refuse to believe it, because any acknowledgement of failure threatens their position of power, and their power is more important than saving any lives. What's that got to do with anything? Well... <laughs> I think at this point it's clear that America's gun culture is melting down. But the Republicans in Congress would rather maintain their power than save lives. The latest evidence. The latest. The latest evidence is the two mass shootings in less than 24 hours. One in El Paso, Texas. The other one in Dayton, Ohio. Making four mass shootings in America in the last week alone. 255 in 2019 so far. Now, there are two bipartisan background check bills that have passed the House, but are being blocked by Senate Majority Leader and this month's centerfold of Corruption Monthly, <laughs> Mitch McConnell. Now, that is his mating call. McConnell's... <laughs> McConnell's had these two bills since February, but he won't take any action. I'm sure he has his reasons, like the $1.26 million in NRA contributions he has received. Now, look, you can't put a price on human life, but it doesn't stop Mitch from trying. <laughs> After every one of these tragedies, this is calm. Every, every time this happens, we go, hey, we should have sensible gun legislation. Everybody wants sensible gun legislation, and nothing happens. Well, maybe it's time for senseless gun legislation. Okay? Maybe turn in your assault weapon, and in exchange, we give you a giant pork sausage. Okay? That makes no sense. That is senseless. Completely senseless. Yeah. Give me your gun, you got a giant pork sausage. It's even more phallic than your gun, and it's only gonna hurt you. <laughs> this time. But this time, the problem is not, is not just uh, the, these semi-automatic rifles that are on the streets. It's also overt racism. When a reporter asked El Paso native Beto O'Rourke if there was anything the president could do about the shootings, he did not hesitate to name the radioactive core of this particular meltdown. Is there anything in your mind that the president can do now to make this any better? Uh, what do you think? Um, you know the he's been saying? He's, he's been calling Mexican immigrants rapists and criminals. Um, I, I don't know, like, members of the press, what the yeah. Hold on a second. You know, uh, I, I, it's, it's, these, um, it's these questions that you know the answers to. I mean, connect the dots about what he's been doing in this country. Um, he's not tolerating racism. He's promoting racism. He's not tolerating violence. He's inciting racism and violence in this country. So, um, you know, I, I just, I, I don't know what kind of question that is. Well said. Well said. That's refreshing candor. Yeah. Great to refreshing the candor. It's all well and good. Mm -hmm. It's all well and good to offer thoughts and prayers, but sometimes you want shouts and swears. Yeah. Today, today, Trump... Trump put on his president pants and addressed the tragedies in El Paso and Dayton, Ohio, or tried to. May God bless the memory of those who perished in Toledo. Okay. All right. Wrong city, but don't worry, sir. It's not like Ohio's that important in presidential elections. <laughs> Joe Biden better hope it's not, because last night he offered sympathy for the tragic events in Houston and also in Michigan. 
Holy Toledo. Oh. Oh. Later on in his address, still from the White House, from the White House, Trump uh, took a strong stand. In one voice, our nation must condemn racism, bigotry, and white supremacy. I try my best every night, but you're still in office. <laughs> So who's to blame for these shootings? Trump had a, let's say, thought. We must stop the glorification of violence in our society. This includes the gruesome and grisly video games that are now commonplace. First of all, there is no link between video games and shootings. Every country has video games, but these tragedies only happen here. Secondly, I would love to hear Trump try to name one video game. <laughs> These violent video games. These so many of these violent video games. <laughs> Tetris Munch. Ghost, obviously, Ghost Ghost Mario and Grand Theft Pong. <laughs> then, in his own way, Trump tried to heal a nation. Now is the time to set destructive partisanship aside so destructive and find the courage to answer hatred with unity devotion and love yes we must set aside partisan bickering over who fired up the white nationalists in our country <laughs> and come together as one to sing send her back oh lord send her back so Not everyone was heeding Trump's call to unity, like Cory Booker, who heard Trump's speech and texted this to his campaign manager, who then tweeted it, listen to the president, such a bull <laughs> soup of ineffective words. Okay. I think I see what's going on here. I see what's happening here. Okay, I see what's happening here. Oh, so Beto swears. Now everybody jumps on the curse wagon. <laughs> The next debate is going to be a lot of fun. You know, Mr. Vice President, they have a saying in my community. You're dipping your spoon in the bull soup and you don't even know the taste of ass croutons. <laughs> but, um... Is that a saying? I don't... I don't, I don't know that I don't, I, I don't, I don't know. know. He just... I, I don't know. That Trump defended guns on camera, but on Twitter he was more open to compromise. Republicans and Democrats must come together and get strong background checks, perhaps marrying dot, 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 <laughs> dot, 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 this legislation with desperately needed immigration reform. We must have something good, if not great, come out of these two tragic events. And if I know anything about marrying, it's always a tragic event. <laughs> but listen to what he's doing. Listen. Listen to what he's trying to do. Listen, listen to what he's trying to do here. Gun control and immigration reform have nothing to do with each other, and they're also the two hardest things to do in Washington, so naturally, he just wants to combine them. Congress has not been able to eat fire or levitate. So they should try to do them both at the same time. <laughs> Might make it easier to levitate with those flames shooting out your butt. <laughs> Trump was able to find at least... Trump was able to find at least one person to defend him. Acting Chief of Staff Mick Mulvaney, seen here explaining how tall a pile of lies he's about to spew. <laughs> Mulvaney, he went on the Sunday shows, and he pointed out that gun violence has nothing to do with guns. We've had guns in this country for, for hundreds of years. We haven't had this until recently, and we need to figure out why. I, I think I might know why. It's because <laughs> those guns we had back then, hundreds of years ago, were way slower and way less powerful. It's why, during the Revolutionary War, the British soldiers volunteered to wear red bright coats and uh, stand in a straight line. <laughs> uh, I say, would you mind killing us more quickly? It's nearly tea time, and we have to do this all over again in the Crimea. Now, the Crimea. Ah, ah, Red Bull. Red Bull. Nothing to be done. Nothing to be done.
Mulvaney's main argument, everyone is to blame except his boss. This is a serious problem. There's no question about it, but they are sick, sick people, and the president knows that. So, I, again, John, I don't think it's fair to try and lay this at the feet of the president. It's true. You cannot lay this at the feet of the president, because that's where Mick Mulvaney sleeps. <laughs> we got a great show for you tonight. The star of HBO's Succession, Brian Cox, is here. Hannah Gadsby is here. But when we return, another Trump appointment bites the dust.